Are you having fun, little buddy? Are you having fun? Shadow and I have come up to Brian Head. Brian Head Peak is right there. And Cedar Breaks National Monument, which is just over the hill there. And this whole area here is BLM land. And people come to Brian Head because of the spectacular agates. But I've camped all around here because I come to do astrophotography. We're close to 11,000 feet in elevation. And it almost doesn't matter where I'm camped, there are agates, beautiful agates everywhere. So I came up on this trip to do two things, set up the telescope, image the cosmos, but try to unravel a little bit the mystery of the area and why there's, it's so rich in agate formation. But I mean, I'm all set up to image again tonight and hopefully the skies will stay just the way they are. But for now we are going to work on unraveling the mysteries of the agate formation. Yep, there's agates. Agate there. Maggot there. I'm not going to bother picking up every little agate. They're in tremendous abundance. But we'll look for the good, big, beautiful ones. So I would think one of the mysteries that we need to figure out is what is the rock around here. There's quite a variety. This looks like a big piece of volcanic rock. And this this looks like it might be tough. And we'll read about that. I found some information. There's also limestone formations and sandstone formations. And <laughs> Look at this. This is spectacular. Look at that. That is just beautiful. It's got a lot of white and clear, some red. I wonder how big that is. I wonder if that's like, oh, I could take that one if I wanted it. Wow. Wow, that is really something. All right, we know where it is. Let's see what else we find, but that's a really cool rock. I might just take that home. This is coyote country. So Shadow has his protective superhero vest on that I made for him. There's coyotes up here, and bobcats, and mountain lions, and this high up in elevation, there's probably bear as well, but I don't think that would protect him from a bear. <laughs> Might buy him a little time. Here's one right in the road. I wonder how big it is. That could be the very top of an enormous agate. It's moving, so I don't think it is. I think... All right, give me a second to dig that out. All right, I got it out. That is just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'll clean that up and be able to show that all to you, but even even with the dirt on it. 
spectacular. Love to know how that is formed. Let's go clean it up. So how this is formed is the mystery to me because when they're formed in a volcanic host, they often show the, you know, the outline of the host. You can tell it was formed in a, a volcanic rock, but I can't with these. Now this is a piece of volcanic rock that I'm using to prop that up. I mean, it could be, but I don't know. And I, I'm gonna read you some information and maybe together we can figure it out. But again, this stuff is everywhere. It doesn't matter whether you're clear over there at Brian Head Peak where it's just an enormous abundance, whether you're over by the cedar breaks, you find it in the surrounding areas, whether you're camping around here, and as I walk around here, Sometimes I find a lot of it shadow, sometimes not. But you can always take it for granted. There's gonna be some around. There's always some around. So I'm also waiting for the wind. It's kind of windy. I'm kind of waiting for the wind to settle a little bit to launch the drone. So while we're waiting, let's, uh, let's read what I've learned about the area. All right, we're set up by the fire. Even though it's beautiful and sunny, this is the early part of October, and it's just chilly enough that sitting by the fire is kind of nice, but not so cold that I want to put a coat on. <laughs> so <laughs> the fire, I'm letting it die down, but it's still throwing off a lot of heat. And so we're gonna sit by it. Now, this information is from the uh, Park Service, the National Park Service, about cedar breaks and the geologic formations around it. I won't read all of it to you, uh, but it's so fascinating. Standing at the rim of Cedar Breaks Amphitheater, you gaze into a high altitude wonderland of colorful cliffs and pinnacles. Yet the rocks tell stories of ancient seas, violent volcanoes, and a time when a visitor to Cedar Breaks would have found themselves afloat in a body of water the size of modern day Lake Erie. Streams and rivers would bring sand and silt and mud into the lake, where it settled to the lake bottom. Trace amounts of iron in the sediment would combine with oxygen and water, rusting many of the layers into warm red, orange, and pink hues. Over 25 million years, it created intricate and vibrantly colored layers of the Clarion Formation, the most prominent rock layer at Cedar Breaks and nearby Bryce Canyon. A suite of volcanic rock above the rim of the amphitheater point to the arrival of violent and turbulent times. These volcanic eruptions, among the largest in Earth's history, sent pyroclastic flows, hot clouds of ash, volcanic gases, and molten rock fragments racing across the landscape. These flows formed a volcanic rock called Tuff found near the summit of Brian Head Peak. So at the very top there, you find volcanic tuff. And I think we find some of that around here as well. From another website that is called Rock Tumbling Hobby, it's Geology 101, Brian Head Agate. It repeats a lot of what I just read, but then it throws in here. The Brian Head Formation, it also has colorful beds of chalcedony in various shades of white, gray, yellow, red, black, and brown, all typically with a white weathering rind. The chalcedony forms resistant beds as much as 10 feet thick and is thought to have resulted from silification of limestone beds. And there you have it. <laughs> this agate was formed in limestone beds. 
So although this area is rich in volcanic activity, unlike a lot of other areas where the agate is formed within a volcanic coast, and I found lots of that in southern Utah, this is different. The wind continues to settle, and I think the longer I wait, the better. It's almost noon. I think I'll wait till about 2 p.m. to launch the drones. So for the next couple of hours, we're going to hike through these mountains and trees and look for beautiful agate. And as I mentioned, you don't have to go far around here. There's a lot of this, this white agate. This one has some red in it. That'll tumble up nicely. I think I'll keep that one. But I'm going to have to be selective because it's everywhere. So I have something funny to tell you. Do you see all these little holes? This entire field is nothing but little holes and pushed up dirt from tunnels. And this is all made from, you know, little uh, groundhogs. I would uh, not groundhogs. They're smaller. Uh, actually, I'm not. I'm not sure what makes them, but they're they're small. They're like a little uh, like a little marten or something. So last night, as I was imaging, I went inside the camper. I came back out to check the you know the rig, and I have a pretty powerful headlamp. It has different levels of of brightness, and I happened to click it on the brightest, and it is a very strong beam. And as the beam glanced across the field, all these little glowing eyes, <laughs> hundreds of little glowing eyes <laughs> were staring back at me. The light had caught their attention and they were all popping their little heads up and all staring at me. It, it, was, it was funny, it, it, it was cute. <laughs> yep, they must be nocturnal. I know shadows on the hunt for them constantly. And he never gets them, so these must be pretty deep tunnels. I'm kind of glad he doesn't get them. He has fun trying, though. What do we have over here? Look at that. Really beautiful. Definitely take that. Oh, that's that one is solid, solid piece of agate right there. That should just tumble up really nicely. Another one and another one over here. It's got kind of a little bit of a you know some color to it that probably comes from that orangey's crust that's on it. But to the naked eye it looks a little like honey. It never quite comes the colors never quite come across the same on the camera I've noticed. Look for the pretty ones, Shadow. Look for the pretty ones. Okay, do you see this road right here? We drove up this last night because I wanted to camp down there by the lava flow. And you can see that lava flow. And I walked along the edge of the flow and I didn't find any chalcedony. But then as I crossed, as I walked down and then up and started walking up this hill, I started to find it. Now I would have said to you that this chalcedony here, the agate, some jasper that we're finding, was formed in a volcanic host. Just from what I saw on Google Earth, with all those huge volcanic lava flows and the volcanic activity here. But I would have been wrong and I was wrong <laughs> in a previous video on that. This is sedimentary. This uh, chalcedony is formed in sedimentary rock. And so let's talk a little bit about that. 
So chalcedony is silica that has made its way, mixed with water, into cracks and crevices and pores and different cavities of rocks. And under heat and pressure, it solidifies. And if it's mixed with uh, other elements, it gets some color. If it's translucent or transparent, we typically call it an agate. If it's opaque, got a lot of color in it, we call it a jasper. But agates and jaspers are both chalcedony, and chalcedony is predominantly silica. We have a visitor coming up the road there. We'll pause and let him pass. Before I forget, don't rock hound on the actual property of Cedar Breaks National Monument. It's a national monument, national parks and so forth are, it's against the law. So I don't want to get you in trouble. There's lots and lots of BLM land and uh, national forest land surrounding it. So you have lots of places to rock hound, but avoid, be careful, avoid accidentally rock hounding on the Cedar Breaks National Monument property. Can you see that honey color? That looks like a honey color to me. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. I wonder how big that is. If I can get it to move a little bit. What do you think? Is it a keeper? It's got some beautiful chalcedony in there. I could slice that up. I'll put it in my bag. And if I end up finding even better stuff and it starts to get too heavy, I'll take it out. Well, I filled up my bag and I'm lugging it back and we'll clean up what we found, take a closer look. But it's also calming down nicely so we can fly the drone. Actually, I went further than I realized. I always tend to do that.
<laughs> Shadow. <laughs> We're not going home yet. Let's go launch some drones.